October 5, 2023. Uh, every month on the fifth of the month, when the fifth gets here, no matter what month it is, the first thing I think about when I realize it's the fifth of the month is my beautiful Chris. Uh, it was 30 months ago today when her life changed dramatically, April 5. Uh, Chris had that stroke that evening, just about this time of the day, uh, right just about this time of the day. So we're just about right now, just right here before dark, the sun's about to set over there. It's bright right now and my eyes shining, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day here in Southern Oklahoma, a beautiful day here at Twin Eagle Ranch. God blessed us with 3.2 inches of rain uh, yesterday and last night. Rain 4.65 in Ardmore, which is only 20 miles south of here. So we came that close to getting another inch and a half, I guess you'd say. 3.2 inches, that's the first rain we've had in October. Uh, uh, first rain we've had in two or three weeks, really. And, and uh, didn't really do much to the lake here, but it helped the ranch, helped the land a lot. And... Uh, help uh, food plots that we're, uh, we're going to finally drill here in October 5. But uh, I want to just visit a little bit and give you a little bit of update on Chris. Uh, 30 months, two and a half years, two and a half years. Um, and I'll just say right off the bat, Chris is getting better all the time. I, I say that to people every single day of my life. Um, no matter whether if I'm here or if I'm in California or Montana or New York or Florida or Arkansas or Missouri or wherever, I say that because I have people ask me from all over the country, everywhere I go, how's Chris, how's Chris? And I have that one pat answer, she's getting better all the time. And that's exactly true. I'm not stretching the truth at all. She's getting better all the time. Um, she still can't walk. She can't use her right arm. Uh, and she still doesn't talk plainly all the time. Uh, she says many things as plain as I'm talking right now. She says many other things, it's just gibberish that I can't understand at all. And, and uh, I occasionally, when she calls me something other than Jimmy, I ask her, what's my name? And she might say, mama, and she said, dummy. <laughs> and I said, well, that's right. <laughs> she said, dummy to me uh, today. And I said, no, and I, I said, my name's Jimmy. And she said, that's what I said. That's what I said, I said, Jimmy. And uh, it doesn't always come out, Jimmy. Uh, I know that she knows my name. And, but what she says in her mind and what comes out of her mouth is still two different things. And she gets so frustrated still. But she is better all the time. And uh, I'm reminded of that often. Uh, I see her every day. Uh, that doctor told me 30 months ago today, actually would have been the morning of the 6th, uh, that she would probably never leave that hospital alive. If she did, she would have to live in a nursing home the rest of her life. She would never come back to this ranch. Can I tell you, she lives here at this ranch with me all the time. Her and I are here uh, as much as I can possibly be here. I'm still working. I'm 79 years old, but still working. Um, I've got a, appearances coming up here uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, next Friday night, Friday the 13th, I'll be in uh, Kalispell, Montana. Uh, I hate the, I hate that that happens to fall on that night, not because it's Friday the 13th, but because my buddy Larry Walker's mama, which is close to 100 years old, is having a big birthday party that night in Dallas, and I, I promised I would go to her birthday party, and I was really wanting to go. You get a chance to go to somebody's birthday party that's 90 years plus, go every time you can. Go every time you can. And uh, But we got that big church event. I'm really looking forward to that in Kalispell, Montana. I'm looking forward to going to Montana. I just hate it that I can't spend two or three days out there looking at the country and hopefully getting in some fishing. And uh, I did. I got offers to go fishing. And and uh, uh, my buddies out there are fishermen. Uh, they, 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 uh, they, they went out there and built a, started a church from scratch and having tremendous success, Veneration Church. Uh, and I'm looking forward to going out there. But um, um, when somebody hasn't seen Chris in a few months, every one of them, every single one of them tell me, she is so much better than, now than she was. She is so much better. And uh, just recently, uh, Billy and Rhonda stand, Rhonda stand for uh, friends of mine from our church. Uh, Billy worked here on the ranch and lived here for a while. Um, they go in the summertime and, and work at a, a national park uh, where they come in, you know, and check the, and check your deals and say your park passes and stuff they do that every summer they take their their uh, their motor home or fifth wheeler out there and 
and spend the summer doing that. And they just love it. They make a little extra money, but they have a summer vacation at the same time. And this year they were in Colorado. They go to a different state every, every summer. And a lot of the people do that that are retired. You see them at all these parks and, and lakes and stuff around. And, um, and Billy told me uh, the first Sunday he was back at church, which I think was not last Sunday, Sunday before last. Uh, he told me, he said, I sure can't tell a big difference in Chris and when we left. And they just left back when the summer started. So that's only like three or four months ago, maybe gone four months or five. And uh, he said, I can sure tell the difference. She looks so much better. She's doing so much better now. So she is doing better. And um, even though she can't walk, she still can't use that right arm. Uh, I was laying in bed with her just a couple of nights ago. And, and I reached over and with my left hand and got a hold of her right hand. And I, I placed her hand in her fingers in my head and I just squeezed it just like we were holding hands we're laying there in bed and I said honey can you feel that she said no I can't and I said well I can and it feels really good she went off on to sleep and I held her hand and thought past memories through my mind and thought and thought and I squeezed her hand, and squeezed her hand, and squeezed her hand. I probably did for an hour. Finally dozed off to sleep holding her hand. I don't know how many of you old guys hold hands with your wives that you've had for 40 or 50 or 60 years, but Chris and I have always held hands since we were teenagers. And uh, she still holds my hand a lot with her, with her left arm, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with her right, right arm either, other than her brain's not connected to it. Physically, it's fine, just like her leg on the right side is fine. Her brain's just not connected to it. But uh, I went to sleep holding her hand, and I kept thinking, golly, wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be something if right now she'd just squeeze back? Maybe even in her sleep, her brain would connect and she would squeeze back. We've got one of those mechanical hands that you put in there like a glove and it opens and closes her fingers. We, we, we put that on her a lot. It's a machine glove and opens or closes the fingers and hopefully get that relayed to the brain somehow. Cause one of the other brain cells to pick that up or nerves or whatever causes all that to happen. But, uh, but she is better all the time. And that's the main thing. God is healing Chris. Uh, I know that I've answered thousands of comments and there's been thousands and thousands of prayers and hundreds of thousands of prayers, maybe millions of thousands of prayers. Many of y'all are praying right now. Many of y'all tell me on YouTube and Facebook and, and our social media channels, many of you tell me I'm still praying for Chris every day, I'm praying for Chris every day. And I know you are. I know you are. And can I tell you, I'm still expecting God to totally heal Chris. And I'm expecting it because I know he can. And I pray and tell Jesus every night, every single solitary night, Lord Jesus, when I read about you walking on this earth, and it talked about you walking through the crowds and bringing sick people to you on mats and blind people leading them by hand and paralyzed people that you walked up to by pools demon-possessed, naked men screaming and shouting in the caves and mountains. And it says in the Bible, you healed them all. It doesn't say anything about they had to have the faith. Many times you told them, it's your faith that made you well. But you you healed a lot of people who didn't have faith. You healed a lot of people who didn't believe in you. What it says in the Bible is you healed them all. And I remind Jesus of that every night. And I just believe he's going to heal Chris. And uh, I'll be as truthful and honest as I possibly can because I don't know any other way to live my life. I am surprised, honestly, that God's not already completely healed Chris in these 30 months. I was told by my son-in-law, who's a doctor, that this is a marathon, Jimmy. It's not a sprint. This is a long battle. you got a long time in front of you. I said, how long, Jack? How long? He said, I don't know. It's different in all cases. He's a heart doctor. He's not a brain doctor, but he's, he knows. And I said, well, however long it takes. 
is up to God. And however long God wants that to be, I'm right there holding her hand. And I'm holding God's hand with the other hand. <laughs> I got a hold of both of them right there. And if I'm that connection, if I'm that connection between Chris and God, that's fine. That's fine. 30 months later, Chris believes God's going to completely heal her. Chris believes she's going to walk. She hasn't always believed she's going to walk. I've told you that before. She told me this last week. I said, do you believe you're going to walk, honey? She said, I believe. I believe. And I think she does. You know what that tells me? That her brain is healed to the point that she can believe what she's learned to believe since she was a little bitty girl and learned about Jesus Christ. The God that she worships every single solitary week, she knows can heal her. And now she's believing right along with me. <coughs> Excuse me. Daddy's going to heal her. And he is. I'm surprised he hasn't healed her already. I've asked God to heal her sooner rather than later. Every night. Every day. But God's going to heal her on his time. But I know because I read it in the Bible many, many times, God changes his mind about various things. And he changes his mind a lot of times because of the petitions that his people raise up to him in heaven. So I'm continuing to ask God to heal her sooner rather than later. And maybe when she can walk, that might be tomorrow. It might be this time next year. It might be two and a half years. I don't know. God's given me strength. God's given me patience. I pray for that every day also. I pray that I just will just always say positive things to her. and I'll never get angry or mad at her because she doesn't act just the way I'd like for her to act in some situations. She sleeps a lot, and I'd rather her be awake a lot more than she sleeps. She enjoys watching sports on television, Dodger baseball, and anything Oklahoma. Oklahoma Sooner football, basketball, softball, women's basketball, baseball, <laughs> just whatever she just loves. Oklahoma University, just like I love Oklahoma University. The Dallas Cowboys are even fun to be a, a fan of this year. Uh, a lot of times it's hard to be a fan of the Dallas Cowboys. Chris is a fan of all that. She enjoys it. And uh, she enjoys this ranch. She loves this ranch. She loves being here. I've been keeping her away from the deer uh, the last few days and going to keep her away from the deer until after this rut's over. Uh, not let her get off the porch and not leave her alone on that porch even. Uh, Mr. Forrest is really a, a big, beautiful deer, but he could be a dangerous and deadly deer as well. And, uh, yeah, and he used, he's used to coming up on the on the front porch, so I want to, I don't leave her out there by herself. She can get on the other porch. I don't think he'll come up on that one here by the lake. She's up there right now. She's up there right now sitting there watching me down here. But I'm surprised God hadn't healed her completely already. I really am. But I know that he will. I know that many of y'all, maybe most of you, are going to keep praying. You can better bet that I'm going to keep praying every single solitary day, every single solitary night, throughout the day. The fifth of every month is just a reminder to me that that's one more month. And as I thought about today, two and a half years, and I haven't talked about how Chris is doing. God, I tell you, she's doing great. She's doing great. She's eating so well. She's gaining a little weight, finally. <laughs> Me too. I did lose about 15 pounds during that little bout. A couple of weeks, away, uh, three weeks, I couldn't taste anything, so I just didn't eat anything. Probably a little bout of COVID, but I took ivermectin, got over it pretty quickly. I never did get sick, so if I had COVID, fine. If I didn't, that's fine too. Got my taste back, though. That's a good thing. So I'm gaining weight myself now. But God is so good to us. We are so blessed. We live almost in heaven. And we think about that, and that's almost sacrilegious to say that because as great as it is where we live, there ain't nothing like heaven. Heaven is so far superior to this, it blow your socks off. And we're all going to get to meet there. We're all going to get to... Everybody will be healed there. There'll be no crying. There'll be no tears. There'll be no blind people. There'll be no crippled people. There'll be no people that can't talk perfectly. But I know Chris is going to be healed right here on this earth, without a doubt. 
And I don't know when that is. Would not surprise me if I walked back up there and she got out of that wheelchair. Wouldn't surprise me if I saw her walking down this hill. You'd see a big boy cry. <laughs> and maybe tears of happiness. But I would cry all over myself. She got up out of that chair and come walking down here and said, let's fish. Let's fish. And I'd say, okay, let's hold hands first. Guys and girls, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love. Thank you for being a part of helping me go through all of this, helping our family go through all this. Couldn't have made it without Sherry and Jamie. Couldn't have made it without all of y'all's prayers, praying for me to be strong and to have patience because that's something I haven't had my entire life. Patience and strength. I've got them now more than ever. I'm so glad I have them. Do you just remember? I surely love you.